What's going on today? What is going on today? You see what it is. Drams on deck. Today, today I'm looking for bourbon. Today I'm looking for something that's just going to get me going. Did you? Did you? I did you. Just did you. Uh, I've done, I haven't done you yet. I've done on a different booker, but your time is coming. Don't you worry. Oh, what we got here? Look at, look at, look at. I got two of the new cats up in here. I got the Penelope bourbon. Look at this right here. This is barrel strength, four grain, sitting at just shy of 58%. You see it, 115 proof. This is a four grain, so it's a mix of four grains. We got corn, we got rye, we got wheat, and we got malted barley. Picked this one up when I was in Kentucky. Same as uh, this one. We got new riff, single barrel, barrel proof. You see it right here. We're getting nice and close up on it. This thing is sitting at just shy of 57%, 113 uh, proof, sour mass. And this is another one, man. So we got two of the newer cats up here, age at least four years. So I figured we should do both of these. This should do the new riff and the Penelope side by side. Dram's on deck. Let's go. It's time. We here. It's Dram's on deck. And as promised, we got two. Nice, heavy hitter, barrel proofs on deck for review. I mean, they locked, loaded, ready to go. As said earlier, we have the new Rift single barrel barrel proof, and we have the Penelope four grain barrel proof. Both of them high proofs. You know, these are type of bourbons that are kind of up and coming. Like, I mean, 10 years ago, you never really seen a Penelope or a new Rift. So these are up and coming uh, spot distilleries here, Um, you know. When you think of bourbons, you know, some of the older ones, like you've heard of, obviously, uh, Jack Daniels or Old Forester, just to name just a few of them that's been around forever. So these are, like I said, 10 years ago, I didn't, I, you know, these weren't around. So I actually, through my travels, I actually just try to find as, and acquire as many different bottles that I can. Uh, I move around every couple of years. So I currently I'm in Des Moines, Iowa. You know, through, uh, last year I was living in San Diego for some years. Before that, I was living in Pittsburgh. So I move every, probably every three years or so. So. I got another two years here, and then I'll be on to somewhere else. So through my travels, through my personal travels, through my business travels, I always try to acquire different and new bottles. So currently, where I live at Des Moines, Iowa, they don't carry neither one of these. They may, if they do have it, maybe every blue moon, you know, but it's not something I can walk in at my local high V, which is, if you're in this area, it's like a local high-end uh, grocery store that carry these type of things. So you would have to just pretty much get lucky if you were catching around in this area. So luckily... I travel a lot, and I was on. I was in Lexington and Louisville, Kentucky, both early this year, probably around March time frame. And obviously, that's the heart of bourbon country. So I was getting my my shopping on, and I went to different stores, and uh, I got this new riff. So I both, like I said, I got them both around the same time. They're both barrel proof. Uh, I got this new riff. I think I paid somewhere around maybe fifty five, sixty bucks around there. It wasn't that much, no more than sixty dollars. I can remember paying for that for this one. Um, and then for the Penelope Four Grain, I think I dropped probably, it was a little bit more, so maybe around maybe 70, 70 something bucks. I don't know, something around there. Um, both blind buys. Um, I will say that uh, my boy Hood Somalier, which is another uh, reviewer, uh, Hood Somalier put me on this. He, seen, he talked, he spoke highly of it, kind of said, yeah, it was good. If you see a single barrel, barrel proof, something like that, get it. So based upon his recommendation, I got this one. Penelope, we just saw it in the store, asked a couple questions. Google real quick and say, what the hell? Give it a shot. So that's kind of how I came about with those. So sometimes you're just doing blind buy. Sometimes it's recommendation. Uh, sometimes you might get a pour at a local store or a restaurant, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just kind of one of those things. But for me, I've had these since early spring. And now I'm doing a review side by side. Like I said, these are kind of like two up and coming ones. So um, if you're a casual bourbon sipper, you probably may, depending upon where you live at, you may have never seen these before. You know, if you're somewhere, you know, um, like, you know, anywhere, in, obviously in, in Kentucky area, you probably see these on every shelf. But where I live at, you don't see them at all. So it just depends on where you're at. But nevertheless, um, just want to do a review. So from my, from my understanding, this one right here, um, this is uh, around 65% uh, corn, uh, then 30% rye and 5% barley. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is somewhere around, well, it has four grains, so I think the uh, corn is the biggest one. So corn is like, I don't know, 74%. Uh, the uh, rye is 6%, I want to say. Uh, the wheat is around 16% and 3% for the malted barley. So essentially you have those, you know, uh, four different uh, uh, malts of, you know, barley, barley that you mix together and they put it in some uh, new oak. So it's age, I don't know, I think it's three and a half to five years. This is age around four years. 
So and those, so you're pretty much mixing. They're both mixing, combining different uh, mash bills, and they're aging it in oak. And it's, you know, putting that barrel proof, uncut, unfiltered is what was told. And now we're going to review it. So they, the mash bills are different. So obviously that meant, but the one thing they do have in, in common is they both are pretty much high corn. Uh, rye wise, this the new riff has more rye in it than the uh, Penelope does, but they're both high in corn. They're both, uh, you know, blended in malted barley's, and they're both aging pretty much new oak. So um, barrel proof, like I said, they're comp they're comparable in as far as in the um, in the age as well. So nevertheless, uh, we're gonna start on the right hand side. I'm gonna start with this new riff. Uh, we're gonna nose it. We're gonna taste it. We're gonna score it. Let's see what we got. And just before I do that. On the color scheme, they're pretty much a lock on the color. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but they're both pretty much locked in on the color scheme. Probably medium amber brown consistency color. Pretty much, like I said, that if I didn't know, you know, which one was which, I, I mean, the color alone, I, uh, they're pretty much dead on. So, but on the new riff, start with the single barrel. I'm gonna nose it and see what we got. <sighs> it smells like a bourbon right off the bat. Get a heavy dose of oak, sweet oak. And you get a lot of like a vanilla on here too. Vanilla and oak is just the two prevalent things on the nose you can get all day. You get a little, just a little bit of honey, just a little bit of uh, some allspice as well. But like I said, you, you definitely get oak, spice, <sighs> vanilla, big on this one. And these are, are barrel proof. So like I said, these are you know, upper 70, upper 50, I think one fifty seven percent others 56%. So they're pretty much, you know, well above 55%. And so I like, that's kind of what I prefer. Anything that's over 50%, you know, or 50 above, I would say, is my uh, preference for ABV. That's not to say I won't enjoy something that's under 50% because I do, but that's just the preference for me. So, <sighs> yeah, but you smell like a traditional bourbon. I mean, nothing that's uberly complex, but mostly just a strictly on the nose, you know, like I said, vanilla, oak, spice. Those are the main three things you get on the nose. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Without further ado, take this first sip and let's see what we got. Cheers. Mm. Okay. Okay. That first sip. Smacking me right in them. Right in, the, right in the chest right now. I feel it going down nice and hot. Okay. Okay. I feel you. Okay. You ain't no punk. I got it. Okay. The first sip is always the hottest one. After, the sec after that, the second, third sip, get it easy. So anyway, take one more quick sip. Because as you know, my first sip right now, my pad is tingling. It's getting uh, sensitized to the alcohol. But the second sip, I can dive deeper into the notes for you. One more quick sip. So, rock it back. Mm. Has a medium creaminess to it too. You get a heavy oak on here. Has some similarities with with the actual nose. You get heavy sweet oak. You get caramel, vanilla, allspice, like a like a light gingerbread note. You get a little small pepper note as well. You get it all rolled in. It, this, this sweetness is kind of medium. Um, so, but the one thing that surprised me, I was running around like, okay, it's, it has a medium viscosity to it. I say viscosity, that's about oiliness. It has, you know, it has some, some a little bit of creaminess to it. But like I said, the boat, the notes are pretty, you know, you know, standard bourbon. You got, like I said, sweet oak, vanilla, caramel, allspice, pepper. That's what you get. I mean... It's like I said, I, I love the creaminess. I like the proof. I like I said, the, the, you know, it's definitely going to, you know, you know it's there. You know, when you, if you blindfolded me, you gave it to me, I would think this is a high proof. But it still sips pretty good, I would say. Because like I said, I'm a little bit used to drinking high proofs. But nevertheless, um, very solid notes. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say there's anything, there's nothing I, I, that would be outside the realm of a typical bourbon. It just maybe just more amplified because the ABV is higher. Um, so I like it. So, you know. It's similar if you ever had like a, you know, uh, 
a four roses or something of that nature um i'm not saying it tastes like four roses but it, it's it's in a comparable uh, same as like it's very comparable to it in, in some sense i do like it i enjoy this um i did add some water so i took two quick sips neat nothing on it and then I just, as you saw, I took my second sip. I added a little bit of water because I wanted to kind of see if the obviously it's higher ABV. So if you water it, sometimes it may um, alter the taste, good, bad, or indifferent. So I did add uh, plentiful drops of water to it. So now I'm going to take a quick sip. This is with water and see if anything is different. But on the nose, the nose is pretty much staying. Oh, vanilla, pretty much same. Not nothing changed. On the nose, and keep in mind it you know hasn't been sitting as long either. So, so I'll take one quick sip of water. Mm. So, with the water, I think the pepper note kicks up a notch. So you get more pepper on here. Oak is still there, vanilla there. Has some similarities are very same. Only difference is, is on that sip I took, that black pepper note, I was kind of in the background, I took a step forward. It's getting the forefront now, so you get a lot more of that pepper note. Still get the sweet oak, vanilla, the allspice is still there. Very similar, just like I said, just the pepper note kicks up a notch. Um, like I said, man, it's, it's around, let's say, about 50, 60 something bucks I paid for this. So that's not a bad buy, not a bad buy for a, a barrel proof. Um, I mean, you think about it, most standard, technically, what you'll call barrel proof uh, bourbons are going to run you at least 50 and up on the average. Easy. So this is pretty much right in that radar. So I think it's accurately priced. The bottle looks cool. Um, like I said, man, you you get, a, you know, you get a little bit of the rice spice in there with, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, all spice, you get the pepper. Um, like I said, sweet old vanilla. Like I said, very standard. Um, what you would get notes in a, in a uh, bourbon. Nothing that's going to be overly complex. Nothing's going to knock my socks off. Nothing that is overly complex, but it is good. Let me take one more quick sip and I'll give you a score. Yep. More the same. Pepper notes still popping up there. Sweet oat, vanilla, etc. Um, for me, Scoring this new riff, single barrel, one of one out of a ten, ten being the best for me. Drams on deck. I give this a seven seven five out of a ten. Um, I think you know it's a, that's a that's a good score. That's that's a good score. Uh, seven seven five out of a ten. So seven and three quarters out of a ten. I think it's good. High proof has a medium finish to it. Um, like I said. Those are the pros. It's relatively priced, nice looking bottle. Uh, has you know pretty much what we call the uh, common bourbon note. So if you're looking for a bourbon that that tastes like a bourbon, this does the trick. It's high proof, medium finish, nice look. Those are the pros of it. Relatively priced as well. Uh, the cons is depending upon where you live at, you might not find this new riff. So um, so pretty much you know availability is going to depend uh, depend upon where you live at. You know, some places you can get this all day, every day. Some places you ain't going to get it at all. So, depend, like I said, availability is going to waver. Um, and the only other thing is, like, it's just the complexity is not there. I mean, necessarily, I'm not saying it has to be. It's not like it's a, you know, $150 or $200 bourbon. Then I would expect more from it in that price point. But um, for four years, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I, I like it. It's just not overly complex. I mean, you're going to get a bourbon. It's going to taste like a bourbon. Um you know, uh, some people's notes may slightly differ, but mine is, but you, I think most people that have a review is probably going to say you're going to taste vanilla, caramel, uh, pepper, um, you know, sweet oak, those type of things. That's what you're going to uh, taste. Um, some people say it may get a little chocolate or something, but I didn't really pick it up. But nevertheless, it's a good bourbon. It's a good bourbon. Like I said, it's only 50, 60 bucks. That's not bad. High proof. So yeah, seven, seven, five out of a 10 drams on deck. If you see it, you want something new, give it a shot, you know? I, I haven't never seen it at a restaurant unless you go to, like, a whiskey house. They will have, probably have it at, at a whiskey house. But outside of something like that, at least in this area, you ain't going to, damn sure, you ain't going to find it anywhere. Uh, if you go to anywhere in Kentucky, I'm quite sure they may have it there. So, anyway, new riff, single barrel, 775 out of a 10 for Dram's on deck. Take one quick sip of water. Mm-hmm. Jump on this Penelope. As I said earlier... Four grains, aged three and a half to five years. 
high proof as well. Um, so they pretty much, you got a different uh, mix of, of the mash bills put together. Uh, like I said, this one was a little bit more, slightly more expensive. So dude, this was, like I said, this was like in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, where I got it from. So I was trying to do my um, research. One of the guys in the line said it's the MGP product. So, um, you know, MGP, obviously, they make a lot of spirits out there, you know, um, same way with Smoke Wagon and a couple, many other ones. But nevertheless, so that's not unusual. Uh, four grain put together. And, you know, like I said, man, this was a blind buy. Um, this one came as a recommend. This one came as a blind buy. I just saw it, asked a few questions, just went with, you know, just went with it. So, um, as always, like I said before, we're going to uh, nose it. We're going to taste and score it. Let's see what we got on this nose here. So, you get toasted oak on here. I get like a little rice spice, pepper, light vanilla. That's mostly what I pick up on my nose, you know, the oak, pepper, rice spice, vanilla. Like I said, nothing, nothing overly uh, complex. You know, if you are someone who's a worldly whiskey guy and you know like a uh, like a sophisticated peated scotch, there's a lot going on. If you like if you know in the art bag, like a, you know, certain ones, like you can just get so much meat shot. It's just so many things you can throw out there. Like I think. You know, not to get off topic, but I think it's, I'm only talking about nosing wise. That's why I always prefer scotches nosing, because, especially peated ones, because that that peat on the nose. I'm only talking about the nose. It adds such a lot of dimension of flavor on not just on the palate, but on the nose, and you can pick up a lot of things, especially certain um, peated whiskeys that have like, like a meaty factor. This one's pretty pretty simple. Like I said, it smells like a regular bourbon. You know, vanilla, sweet oak. Rice spice, you know, nothing overly complex, but, you know, typical bourbon. <sighs> this one is high proof as well. It does not burn in my nose. So, uh, but yeah, you know, traditional bourbon, nothing special going on here. Without further ado, take this first sip of Penelope 4 grain barrel proof. Let's see what we got. Cheers. All right. This one tastes a little bit, to me, a little bit more sweeter. Slightly, not not heavy, but like slightly sweeter than the new riff of Barrel Proof. I'll take one more quick sip. I'll dive deeper in the notes for you. This one here, I get sweet oak, vanilla, honey, nice rice spice too. A nice, it's not peppery though, it's more like a cinnamon nutmeg spice. That one's more pepper. This one is more like of a sweeter spice, like a it's rice spice, but it's kind of like a cinnamon nutmeg type of spice with it. It's very prevalent and it, and it flows with the sweetness like the caramel, the honey, slightly more honey on here. Um, yeah, I like this one. I like that one. I, I, mean, I like both of them, but this one seems to be checking the box a little bit more. Um, I think maybe just because it's slightly sweeter and it's instead of a pepper, it is a spice, like a sweeter spice. And that's not, a, a you know, some people like pepper. I like pepper too, but, um, but just for me, I guess I probably like tend to lean towards the sweeter side. And obviously, all spice cinnamon is going to be sweeter than a, like a black pepper note. So that's why I, I say that. Because, you know, if you know my reviews, I kind of like the sweeter side. So this is slightly sweeter for me. Um, but they both pack some little heat to it. But because I'm already three, four sips in, I don't feel the heat as much as I did on that first sip of that one. As, you know, traditionally, as, as you know, this is common right there. But nevertheless, they're both solid, though. Uh, so this one, I add a little bit more water on this one. See if I open it up some more. Um, like I said, they're both almost sitting at close to 60% each, so they can take, you know, a little some more drops of water. I mean, I, I put 
tall shots of both of them. So kind of let it open up a little bit, see if it unlocks any more extra flavors on this one. Um, but no, no, man, they're both solid pours of barrel proof, you know. Um, you know, if, if you ever had some, these are, like I said, these are more on a traditional side. Like if you ever had, for example, uh, Old Forest 1910 or even Old, Old Forest or Prohibition 1920, those, how you know, that has like a very maltily and chocolatey. Those aren't these. These aren't malty and chocolatey. These are kind of traditional, like I said, oak, vanilla, rice spice. So, you know, um, the ones I've, I'm talking about, like I said, the Old Forester ones, those are more chocolatey and darker. So, you know, so those are just different spectrum. So, like I said, if you want traditional, these are more traditional. Um, like I said, just using that, for example, the Old Foresters, 1920, 1910, those are more chocolatey, malty, those type of things. It's, it's, they're both barrel proof, but these are more traditional. That's, that's why I would make distinction of that. So, all right, let's take one more quick sip. This is with water. Good. So this one, it says sweeter rice spice. That's really the main thing. The commonalities, they both have sweet oak, they both have vanilla, a little bit of honey. They share a small caramel note. The major difference, this one, this rice spice is more um, peppery. This one is more like cinnamon nutmeggy, that, if that makes sense. So that's the major difference. But the caramel, the vanilla, the oak, the sweet oak, those are pretty much, you know, similar. That's really the major difference. So do you want more pepper note or do you want more of a sweeter note? I, as I said earlier, I like I tend to lean towards sweeter notes more, so that's what I'm going to lean towards this one. So this one's probably going to be the winner for me. Um, Penelope, I like it a little bit more. Than I do the new riff. If I had to rate this one of a 10, 10 being the best for me, Dram's on deck. I give this Penelope four grain barrel proof, eight two five out of a ten. So eight and one quarter out of a ten. Um, like I said, I just tend to like the uh, the the sweeter and uh, softer rice spice notes, and this one's a little bit more of a of a black peppery note but well, like i said it's not you know just a preference thing you know if you like more pepper you and you, know, you probably lean towards that so this is a matter of preference but they're both in the, what you would call in the eight ballpark for me this one was just slightly above it so i give this one an eight two five this one a seven seven five um both solid both barrel proof i think you should check either one of them out if you're looking for something new if you've been sipping you know your standard uh you know uh barrel proofs and you want something different you know you say you know what hey this is not a jack daniels this is not an old forester you know um this is this is something that's you know a little bit different you know um, whether i be in large scene maker's mark or whatever it's just it's just something that's different like i said it's, it's, you can't just see this on the shelf air all the time so that's why i kind of lent towards like i like to open up my palette try different things so they're both solid you should check them both out if you if you're into those notes that is they're more like I said, they're on the traditional side. This is more pepper. This one's more of like a like I said, a pepper rock spice. This is more of what I would call. I mean, I just, I get sweetness too, so I'm not trying to make sense. This is sweet too, but this one's slightly sweeter in my opinion. So the penalty because of that, I, I'm slightly towards there. But anyway, eight two five seven seven five. Hope you like the review. Hope you got something out of it. If you've never seen these bottles, hopefully you can go to the store, go uh, stroll down the aisle. Have a little bit more insight on it as, you know, maybe other reviewers can give you another takes on it as well. And just kind of put that together and say that's something that, hey, you want to invest in or not. Um, but, yeah, these are not what you would call finished bourbon. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, that bourbon is finished in sherry, rum. That's not what this is. So, these are traditional side high proof. So, yeah, something different, Stu. And, like I said, I, these are the first boss I've ever owned of either one of them. So, kind of that's why I want to put them together and kind of put this review for y'all. Hopefully you got something positive out of it. Uh, please, in the, the box, check my Instagram page. I got a lot of uh, pictures in there and I got a couple hidden reviews in there. Please check that out. Also have a, a, a pretty much a cash app Patreon if you do choose to support. That's in the description box as well. Please, if you like this, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. They don't cost you a thing. Um, so anyway, if there's any, and also if you had these, let me know your opinion. So in the comment box, Please let me know what you what you did like, didn't like, etc. Let me know about your opinions of these two. Because like I said, these are up, you know, these are kind of what you would call the newer side. So I want to know people's opinions if they're feeling it, not feeling it, tried it, haven't tried it. Let me know your opinions or your experience with these bottles if you've tried it or not. So I'm curious to know. But anyway, man, I like interacting with you guys. Hope you got some positive out of it. Stay tuned. You got a lot more hot reviews coming your way. Drams on deck, yes, sir.